Robin. Good morning, Paps the family. How is everyone feeling today? Good, good, yeah, so, so, all right. Uh, hey, how many of you guys are happy to see Albie back on the stage? Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. And thank you to the worship team. Um, for worship was awesome, Norm. Thanks for leading out today. Um, here at Pepster, we value selfless service. And every week we have people who serve selflessly. They give up their time, their energy, their gifts to support and encourage and uplift us all. From the first impressions team that greet you at the door to our many discussion groups and environment leaders and facilitators to the sound and video tech team, our awesome ShedX team, Luke and the crew who do an awesome job back there, um, Rich and the Cap Jobs Club, the CAT team. We have um, Andrew who does a solid effort with a solid crew. Um, hundreds of people week in and week out are engaged in our church because we value selfless service. Can we just for a moment just show some love to everyone who serves here by putting our hands together for them, just show them a bit of love and support. We value you and we thank you for here, just giving of yourself to our community. The question for today's sermon is this. In this time and place, where there are so many ways to hear good teaching and meet together in small groups, is it really important to come to church? For the next couple of moments, I'm going to be preaching on this subject titled Half Time. Can you just join me as I offer us a word of prayer? Father God, just wanna thank you for this morning, thank you that we can fellowship, that we can worship. Thank you for the awesome testimony that Robin shared with us, God. And Lord, we just, as we get into your word, as we sit, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will fill us. Pray for an openness, God, and I pray that we would be expectant to hear a message from you. That when we walk out of this building, Lord, that we would be different, that we'd want to change the world for, for you and for your kingdom. This is our prayer. And all God's people said... Amen. Whether you hate it or love it, it is undeniable that New Zealand is number one in the world when it comes to rugby. Is there any All Blacks fans this morning? Any All Blacks fans? Yeah, yeah. As a kid, I remember we had those things called VCRs. You guys remember the VCR days? Yep, yep. Pull the tape out, put another tape in, it showed like all the illegal stuff, and then finally the, the movie would play. I mean, like, we, the kids now don't even have a struggle. Like, I have a nephew and niece who know how to operate Netflix just like that. Like, they don't know the struggle. But when I was a kid, we had videotapes. I remember we had these videotapes um, that, that had the All Blacks uh, games. I remember one of them was like a 1993 game, Tonga, and the All Blacks um, Tonga obviously lost, <laughs> um, but I love watching rugby, and from an early age, I really fell in love with the game. Um, remember watching some of the most fiercest players to ever hit the field. You might, guys might know my, my cousin, um, Joan Lomu. You guys know my cousin, Joan Lomu? Yeah. He's actually my cousin. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in my life, I don't know how many games I've watched uh, of rugby, but I've seen quite a lot. Um, one of the most intense games I've ever witnessed was a game that was played in 2013, where the All Blacks uh, team were playing Ireland. And 18 minutes into the game, 18 minutes into this game, Ireland um, were leading by 19 points. It was 19 and zero at half, at, sorry, at half time against an All Blacks team who 100 and 403 years have not been beaten by Ireland. The last 13 games that they played against Ireland, they have won all of them. So this is a winning streak. And 18 minutes into the game, they're down 18, 19 points to zero. So at halftime, a flustered and confused All Blacks team head into the locker room. It's halftime. 
Now, halftime in any rugby match is crucial. It's what, everyone? It's crucial. It's crucial because it offers a space for the coach to step in and talk to his team. It's crucial because the coach can realign his players with the game plan. It's crucial because he can encourage his players to keep playing well. Or if they aren't playing well, just keep them on the bench. Hey, Richard, it's your favorite spot. <laughs> Halftime matters only, though, if you're playing the game. Let me say that one more time. Halftime matters only if you are playing the game. And just like any game of rugby, there are really only two groups of people. The first is the team. This is, consists of the coaches, the staff, the trainers, the water boy, the bench, the players on the field. And then you've got the second group, which is the crowd. There's two groups of people. And the first one I love because everyone on the team knows their role. The water boy knows that when the team huddles after try or when there's a penalty, he runs out onto that field and he hydrates his teammates. The players know what their specific tasks are on the field. The forwards, they clear out rucks and they push forward in scrums. The backs, they spread the ball out and run plays to penetrate the defense. The game is played well when every person plays their role, from the coach to the water boy. Church family, we are the team. We are the players, we are the trainers and the staff, we are the water boys, we are the forwards and the backs working together in harmony. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are on the team. You are on the team. And I remember growing up thinking that the church was the building. This is what I used to think when I was growing up, that, that the church was the building. But guess what? The church isn't a building. The church is the people. We are the church. And one of the ways I love remembering this is if you look at the word church, you take the two middle letters out, you're left with ch -ch. So, so it doesn't make sense without you are, right? If you take the U and the R, all you have is chicha. It's like, dude, how was chicha today? Oh, yeah, chicha was good. Yeah, yeah. It, doesn't make, it doesn't make sense, right? Without you in the church, or you actually are the church. Um, let's, let's look at a passage of scripture where God kind of gives us uh, another example of what the church looks like. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 7, 27. Um, if you have your World Changes Bibles, the number is 924. Um, if you have the Black Bibles, it is page number 690, which is on the board. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 27. Okay, the Bible says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body. Everyone say one body. By one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. Verse 27, we're just going to skip to there. All of you together are Christ's body. And each of you, sorry, all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Each of you is part of the body. Now, what's Paul saying? Pretty much what he says is that every person on the team matters. 
from the water boy to the coach to the players, every person matters and every role matters. And one of my favorite people to observe is a man by the name of Fani. I'm one of Fani. Can you just wave your hands to us, everyone? Fani? Yep, yep. <laughs> Sleeping already. <laughs> um, Fani, without exception, you see him during the week. He's out in the garden and he is working that garden, like committed as. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but we have a beautiful garden when you guys drive in this whole complex because he comes in and he works on that garden during the week. Another one of my favorite um, people to watch is Brendan. Brendan, where are you? Give us a wave. Brendan back over there. Um, he is the guy who comes in at night and he comes around and he goes through all the law, all doors and windows and makes make sure that our building is safe and secure. How do I know this? So get a text from Karen at 10 p.m. saying that Brendan told her the teen room door was left unlocked. That's how I know. And it was me that left it unlocked. <laughs> every role matters. No matter how small you think it is, every part in the body, every part in the team, every person matters. Now, every role matters, but it only matters if it is played. In this room, we have an awesome team of amazing players, but not Everyone is playing the game. Not everyone is get engaged in the mission and the purpose of the church. Now, don't get me wrong. We are all supporters of the team. We love the All Blacks. But there's a difference between being in the stadium and being on the field. Between the crowd and the player. Sometimes we can have a crowd mentality. What's a crowd mentality? I'll tell you what a crowd mentality is. Trust me, I've seen a lot of rugby matches, but no experience can be more frustrating and yet entertaining at the same time as watching a rugby game with my dad. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I love my dad. Right? He puts pressure on my car, he looks after me when I'm sick and all this stuff. But, man, when you watch a rugby game with my dad, it's like having your own personal um, <laughs> commentator from the islands. Seriously, this is the stuff he said. Oh, come on, Ref. Are you blind or something? That was a forward pass. Go to Spec Savers, you can't see. Uh, this, is my, this is actually my favorite one. Um, every, sorry, unless, oh, sorry. <laughs> especially when we're watching the Tongan, Tongan team play. That's what he says. It's like, useless. You used all your energy in the hockey, you can't play the game. <laughs> that's my dad, man, that's my dad. The crowd mentality is quick to point out faults rather than provide solutions. The crowd mentality watches and observes for their own enjoyment and pleasure. If the, performance, if the performance is great, they applause. If the team loses, they are angry. So what does a crowd mentality look like in our lives? Sometimes we treat life like a sport. We like to help the commentators out. Our view of politics, they should do it this way. Our view of education, why don't they just our view of other parents and their parenting. And sometimes we're letting our commentating enter into the game. Now don't get me wrong, we need to constantly look at and ex examine our practice, how we are playing, what our team's spirit looks like, how we're passing the ball or working as a team. But we can get really good at running commentary instead of jumping into the game. See, crowd mentality affects two things. It affects how you play the game. Let's say the coach didn't decide to show up at their training. You know, they have a full team, but all the backs decided that they were gonna make the 15 squad and leave the forwards on the bench. The water boy decided that his job wasn't even, you know, that good, so he doesn't come and water the, give the team water uh, when they need it. Uh, what do you think is gonna happen? A lot of things could happen. They could uh, score a try, they could possibly be in, in the lead at some point in the game, um, and they could, with a slight possibility, actually end up winning the game. But their chances of winning a game would be increased massively if everyone 
if everyone played their part. You have a part to play. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, you have a part to play. You have a part to play. And every single day of the week, guys, every single day of the week, from Sunday to Sabbath, you are playing the game. One of our, perhaps the values that speaks into this is that we are a community of staunch followers. And when we read the value, it's, it says this, God's word grounds us and his spirit leads us. We are full on, hard out, step by step followers of Jesus. That means every day of the week, every step, every action is an intentional one as a follower of Jesus Christ. You are on the journey, but it's not a smooth journey, right? It's not an easy journey at all, but you are following. You go to life groups, you're in the word, you're allowing God's spirit to live in you, whether it be at school, at work, as an employee, you play the game by loving those people around you and showing by your life that you are a follower of Jesus. But if we aren't engaged in playing the game during the week, we aren't really living and we aren't aware to God's game plan for our lives. We end up letting the other players in our team play the game alone. The crowd mentality not only affects the way you play the game, but it also affects how you engage in halftime. Do you know what halftime is, guys? Halftime is what we're doing right now. This is halftime. Halftime is where we encourage each other and remind each other of the game plan. Halftime is where we allow the coach who is Jesus, our God, to remind us of our team identity and that we are playing for him. Halftime is the only time where the coaches, the staff, the trainers, the water boy, the bench, everyone meet together. We've played the game during the week. We have made mistakes, we have had victories, and now we meet together in the locker room to celebrate what's going good and talk about how we can improve. We worship, we hear testimonies like we have heard today. Halftime is where we remind each other and ourselves what part of the body we are. You're an arm, you're a leg, you're an ear. Encourage our players who are maybe struggling. And then sometimes we get to eat some oranges. Thank you to the lunch ministry. Who is happy for the lunch ministry? Man, I love the lunch times. I think it's the first Sabbath of every quarter. If you didn't know, by the way, first Sabbath, right? Is that right? Every month, first Sabbath of every month, guys. Jump in. It's awesome. Good food. Now I lost where I was. <laughs> um, okay. If the crowd mentality stops you from playing the game during the week, then it will affect the way that you look at halftime. See, a player who hasn't gotten on the field in the first place doesn't need a rest. A player who isn't spending time reading the game plan, the game plan from the coach doesn't know how to play the game during the day and therefore doesn't experience the growth that happens in the locker room. And instead of engaging in worship and coming with an openness and expectancy for God to show up in the locker room, we start criticizing other players. We start pointing the finger at problems. If they could just talk about this sermon or this part of the Bible, if they could just do this bit, if that guy with the stinky hair can't preach, <laughs> if this or that, you know, we start pointing the finger. The crowd mentality that stops us from playing the game during the week stops us from fully engaging in the halftime experience. Halftime only matters if you're playing the game during the week. See, there are players sitting in this room today for a bunch of reasons. I don't know, 
Maybe you were injured the last time you got out on the field. Maybe you were even hurt by someone from your own team. So the crowd has been the safest place for you. But whatever it is, it's stopping you from playing the game. But we need you. We need every single one of you. We, the church, this team, can only ever be its best if every person played the game. April 23rd, 1910, Theodore Roosevelt said this, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. The question today was, in this time and place, where there are so many ways to hear good teaching and meet together in smaller groups, is it really important to come to church? I would say yes. It is fundamentally crucial. The word says in Hebrews chapter 10, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but let us encourage one another. Just like halftime when there's no other time or place during a match where we get to see the whole squad The coach, the staff, the water boy, the bench, the entire team is there. The locker room, the Sabbath, the gathering is a time where we remind ourselves that it's bigger than us. The whole staunch following thing that we talk about and believe here is something that I can do with my whole team. Church is where we allow God to remind us of the game plan to remind ourselves of what, we, what team we belong to, to encourage and uplift each other to play the game better. As the worship team comes up today, I wanna close by sharing what happened to the All Blacks team. I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering what happened. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 19 and 0 at one point in the game, having never been defeated by Ireland, they're in the locker room. I'm, I'm not too sure exactly what was said in that locker room. I'm pretty sure Stephen Hansen had a lot to say. But by the end of the game, with 30 seconds, 30 seconds left on the clock, the All Blacks are down by five points. 30 seconds left, they're down by five points. And after 20 phases, they made 70 meters of yardage. The forwards pushed through the backs, they spread the ball. And at the, when the clock struck 81 minutes and 38 seconds, they score a try. It's tied at 22 all. Aaron Cruden lines up the kick, gets ready and he punts the ball and it misses. <laughs> but the ref says, oh no, these island guys, they actually charged early, so you get another go. He's like, oh my luck, yeah, thank you, thank you, Jesus, I got another go. So he has another go. He kicks that ball, boom, straight in the middle of the post. The All Blacks win their match. Woo, yeah, (laughs) someone's excited. See, sometimes we can come on a Sabbath morning into the locker room feeling defeated, feeling like we have lost, feeling like we've maybe forgotten the game plan, or maybe we haven't been playing at all. It's on the Sabbath, the halftime. God, our coach, desires and longs to pull you up wrap his arms around you and say, I still love you. 
you can do it. I believe in you. Sabbath is where we remind ourselves through worship that we have a coach who is for us. And if he is for us, who really can be against us? A coach who says, 2,000 years ago, I already scored that winning try. You already have the victory. You are a champion. What's our response, church family? We declare Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest to the coach, our God and our Savior. This morning, if you want to say yes, I want to play the game. Yes, I want to play knowing that we already have the victory. I don't want to sit in the grandstands anymore. I want to enter into the field. If that's you this morning, would you just stand and join us as we sing this final song? Hosanna, Hosanna. God is a community. That is our prayer that is our response this morning is just to shout hosanna 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 in the highest we thank you so much that you are our coach thank you so much that every person in this room is on the team god thank you so much that in the locker room on sabbath morning we can get a word from you we can encourage someone else we can worship we can be inspired to go into that second half and conquer the enemy. So we ask God that as we leave this building, that your spirit will move with us, that as we journey into the week, that we'll remember to play the game, Lord. Play the game for you. Play the game knowing, God, that we already have the victory. We thank you so much, God, for giving us that victory 2,000 years ago when you sent your son to die on the cross for our sin. And Lord, we want to say we give our hearts to you. We give our lives to you, God. We thank you so much and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.